every pickleball point starts with a serve. So if you want to be the best possible player, you need to know how to maximize this shot. One thing to keep in mind is that there's a beginner way to serve and there's an advanced way to do it. After a certain level, it's not just about making the ball in and getting the point started. You want to do what you can to start the point with an advantage. One of the best ways to do this is to increase your power. The problem is most players don't know the key elements that you need on your serve to get that effortless power. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to get the most power with the least effort. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of cool tricks to increase your consistency and effectiveness on your serve. Without these, your power is essentially useless, so make sure to stay tuned. All right, let's get into it. So the main concept that you need to know to get good power is called the kinetic chain. So what the kinetic chain means is that when you're hitting a serve, your body essentially turns into a kinetic chain of energy that makes your paddle move at the fastest possible rate. So if you think about how a whip works, when you sling a whip, you're not moving your hand that fast, but because of the kinetic chain, the end of the whip moves super fast. So we kind of want to do something like that when we're hitting our serve. So the way that the kinetic chain works is it starts from our legs and our body and our weight transfer goes into our rotation which travels through our arm and into our wrist and our paddle. So when we hit a serve, we're not just going like this. We're using all of those elements to make our paddle travel as fast as possible. So when you put them all together, it looks something like that. So got the rotation, my arm is very loose, and I'm gonna talk way more about this later, but just for the basics, rotation, weight transfer, and a loose arm. Cool exercise to think about would be what would be the farthest way you could throw your paddle with a serving motion. So if I'm just to only arm it, right, and I'm gonna throw my paddle, it's not gonna go very far, right? And most players are actually just arming their serve like that, which is okay, but look how much further I can get it when I use the weight transfer forward, the rotation, and the loose wrist and the kinetic chain. It's really night and day how much power you can get just with a little bit more effort from being smart. Now guys, I'm gonna take you through each individual part of the kinetic chain. Odds are you aren't doing all of these wrong, so I want you to go through each one of the elements and see which you need to add into your game. So this is kind of a checklist. The first part of the kinetic chain is our weight transfer through the ball and our rotation with our hips and shoulders. So when we hit the ball, there's sort of a motion like this where I'm going forward into it and rotating my body, right? So I want you to think as if you're punching someone, right? If I'm gonna punch someone, if I go like this, then just arm it, I essentially get zero power, right? But if I wanna punch them as hard as I possibly can and knock them out, what I'm going to do is get my weight into it and rotate, right? And that gives me so much more power. Partially because I'm rotating, which moves my arm, but also because when you get your weight into something, the way that physics work is that you hit it a lot harder, right? So if I'm falling backwards when I hit the ball, I get like half the power that I would as if I was going forward into it with my momentum. So if you wanna get the most possible power on your serve, you always need to be considering the weight transfer forward and the rotation through the ball. Literally without any other aspects of the serve, I can still hit it pretty hard with just that, right? So you always wanna consider that and make sure you're doing that. This is probably the number one part of the serve that I don't see players doing. The next part of the kinetic chain is having a loose arm. So when we're rotating our shoulders, our arm drags behind a little bit. So what I see a lot of players doing is they're just using their arm and they're sort of scooping it like this. But when an advanced player hits their serve, they rotate their shoulders and their arm is sort of acting like that whip I talked about a little bit behind their motion like this. So your shoulders go first, then your arm follows, okay? So the way that you do that just by having a loose arm. You don't need to actively make it follow, but if I have a loose arm on my serve, I'm gonna rotate and then my arm goes after. The last part of the kinetic chain and probably the most important to get the most power is the wrist lag. So when I'm doing all this other stuff, meanwhile, my wrist sort of lags behind and that, that's what gives us the most whip effect. So my wrist essentially points back as I'm accelerating towards the ball. So the way you wanna think about it is when you're going towards the ball, the butt cap of your paddle, so this bottom part here, should be facing forward. So you don't wanna be going towards it like this where you're cupping the ball. You want to have the wrist lag to where the butt cap is facing forward and then when you get to the ball, it should naturally snap forward through. 
So in slow motion, it looks like this, a little faster, like that. So that's gonna be responsible for most of your power when you hit the ball. What you don't wanna do though is flop your wrist. When you do the wrist lag, if you have a loose wrist, it should naturally go through the ball. So you're not really gonna go past this point, don't wanna flop it. Butt cap towards the ball, and when you hit it, it extends very slightly, and then you follow through somewhere up here. So as a reminder, so far we have our weight transfer and rotation, a loose arm that kind of travels behind our rotation, and our wrist lag, like this, that snaps through the ball in contact. In another element of the kinetic chain that people neglect, it's not directly associated with the kinetic chain, but the toss is actually very responsible for your power, specifically where you toss it. So if I'm gonna toss the ball behind me, I can't do any of the stuff that I just talked about. So when you're tossing the ball on your serve, you need to make sure that you're gonna make contact with it out in front so that you can rock forward through the ball and out to your side because when your paddle's farther away from your body, it travels a lot faster. Like if I'm gonna try to hit the ball from right here, I can't get any power because I don't have any leverage. When I'm out to the side, I get the maximum leverage so that my paddle's moving as fast as it possibly can. Now that you know all the elements in the kinetic chain, you need to learn how to implement them and the best way to do that is through a simple drill. But before I get into that, if you've liked this video so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. We're coming out with a new lesson pretty much every week in 2024. So if you're trying to improve this year, subscribe so you don't miss out. But back to my drill. So the best way to learn anything new on your serve is with repetition. If you're trying to practice these during your games, you're really only hitting serves here or there, right? There's three other people that have to hit serves too you're not getting enough repetition to really ingrain these. So what I like to do is get a basket like I have here and come out and hit like 100 serves in a row where I'm thinking about one thing. So let's say I want to work on my wrist lag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate that variable and only focus on that. You don't wanna be focusing on like four different things at once. Take it one thing at a time. So I'm not gonna worry about my weight transfer. I already have a good weight transfer, but I'm not gonna be thinking about that. I'm thinking about my wrist lag which is what I'm struggling with at this moment. So that's why I'm focusing on that for this drill, okay? And what I'm going to do is before I even get started serving, I wanna do some shadow strokes. So shadow strokes are where I don't even hit the ball. And when I do these, I'm gonna really be emphasizing my wrist lag through the ball. So if you wanted to work on your rotation, you do the same thing, really emphasizing your rotation. And then after a few of those, you're gonna hit a real serve. So here, I'm focusing on my wrist lag do a few shadow strokes, and then I hit the ball, right? So I do probably two or three shadow strokes, then I hit the ball, and it almost ingrains the right technique into you before you hit the ball, because when you hit the ball, it becomes a little more complicated. So let me do that again. Two shadow strokes. Now I'm gonna actually hit the ball. Had good wrist lag there. One more time. Really focusing on my wrist lag during the shadow stroke, and I kinda go a little slower too. And I actually tossed the ball to myself, missed that one, but I had good wrist lag, so I'm happy. And if I wanted to do this for my rotation, like I said, I'd have two shadow strokes where I'm really focusing on my rotation, then I hit the ball where I'm giving that same emphasis on my rotation. And as you progress through this drill, you can stop doing the shadow strokes and start just hitting the ball every single time. So eventually, I'm just getting good repetition like this. Maybe do like a set of five serves, take a break, get some more balls, and then hit a few more. You don't wanna just do like 100 in a row. Maybe sets of five, like I said. We're back, and I'm focusing on my wrist lag again. And as you progress, you can also try to increase your power. So all these elements we talked about are just meant to get you more power. So in the beginning, I might be going a little bit slower just to get the feel of that technique, but as I'm getting more into the drill, I can start going harder and harder, miss that one again, until I'm hitting them at 80, 90% power. You never really wanna go 100% power, but the goal is to end up at around 80, 90% power in this drill. So to increase your power in the long run, you need to get a ton of reps doing drills like I just showed you. You aren't gonna get 10 miles an hour overnight, so trust the process. To get the most out of your serve though, you need to know the five tricks that I'm about to go through. The truth is that power is only one part of the equation. To have the best possible serve, you also need optimal spin depth, and consistency. Before we get into those tricks though, I wanna talk about our product, the Dink Master. 
If you're really trying to take your game to the next level, the Dig Master gives you an awesome way to train at home. The two types of players that I recommend the Dig Master to the most are someone who's just starting and needs to learn how to dink and volley, or to a 3.0 to 4.0 player that really needs to increase their accuracy on their dinks and get better with their quick hands. So regardless of what type of player you are, those are the two I feel like will get the most benefit. So if you fall into those ranges, I highly recommend checking out the Dink Master it's because it's a really awesome way to get more feel from the ball. When you practice more, you improve more. And by having a Dink Master at home, you're just gonna hit way more balls and you'll get way better. The first trick I wanna teach you is called the changeup. So if I'm just hitting my hard serve over and over again and giving my opponents no variety, eventually they're going to get used to it. So to make your powerful serves more effective, every once in a while, you wanna throw in what's called a change up or a mix up shot. And they do this in baseball too. A pitcher doesn't just throw the ball as hard as they can every time. They have curve balls, they have screw balls, and all that sort of stuff to keep the batter honest. So when you're serving in pickleball, it's the same. One of the best change ups you can throw in is called the screw ball. So when I hit the screw ball, you can see it cuts to the side. I'm essentially spinning it like this with my paddle. I'm putting side spin on it. So it has a sort of corkscrew effect on the ball. It makes it a lot trickier for your opponents to track it. So it's actually a lot harder for some people to hit this serve than a powerful serve, but powerful serves are really hard too. So they're very good to switch back and forth between because when you go for the screw ball and they're used to a powerful serve, they might just miss it. They might not be ready for it. They might be standing too far back. So there's a lot of cool advantages to throwing in a changeup. Another cool changeup you can throw in is a higher loopier serve like this. So when I hit my serve a little bit higher, the bounce is more vertical, which can make it a little bit harder for your opponent to time on their return. Just by adding maybe two or three feet of height, you can just give your opponents a different look that they might not be seeing and make it a little bit more difficult. So I recommend throwing in a changeup maybe every three or four serves, maybe less depending on how well you're serving, but I definitely recommend doing it consistently. You don't wanna just go out and hit every serve hard. It makes you too predictable and it makes it easier for your opponents to hit good returns. The next trick I wanna go through is that when you're hitting your powerful serves, it's essential that you use topspin and have a good arc on your motion. So even when you're hitting the serve as hard as you can, topspin and that rainbow trajectory are essential. So I'm not gonna teach you how to hit topspin, I have other videos on that. But what's important to know is that when you use topspin on your powerful serve, it actually sucks the ball down so you can hit it way harder. So while you might not be able to put as much energy into going forward with your paddle, because you have to go up a little bit more, it's well worth it because you can just swing way faster without missing the ball. So getting topspin, all you need to do is just go from below the ball, get above the ball, and you get way more power and effectiveness on your serve. It also makes the ball jet off a little bit when it bounces. So it actually makes it go faster towards your opponent when it bounces. That makes things more challenging for them. And when you put this hand in hand with the rainbow trajectory, that just makes things extra tricky and it increases your consistency. Because think, if I'm hitting my ball two or three feet above the net, it reduces the chances that I'm gonna miss it into the net. And with the top spin, the ball still drops down. So our consistency goes way up versus if I was just hitting a line drive that was barely going over the net, there's a higher chance there that I'll miss it in the net and that I'll miss it long. So rainbow trajectory and top spin increase consistency and effectiveness. The next trick is what I call the 80% rule. And all that it means is that when you're hitting a powerful serve, you should never really use more than 80%, maybe 85% of your intensity. Because if you're using 100%, you're probably what's called muscling the ball. So you don't wanna use brute force to get power, you wanna be loose. So by using more than 80%, you actually might be losing out on some power. So when you're hitting the ball, always try to be using 80% intensity. That doesn't mean that you're not swinging fast, it just means that you're loose. So it's the optimal intensity to get the most possible power. So remember the 80% rule. The fourth trick that I have is in relation to your consistency, and it has to do with your toss again. So a really important thing to think about on your serve is the consistency of where your toss is. As I said earlier, you want it out to the front and to the side of your body, but what's really important is that you're not hitting the ball in a different place every single time. 
So really try to dial in your toss so that every time when you hit a serve, it's in the exact same spot. This will make you have way more consistency and accuracy. If I'm hitting the ball and every time it's in a different place, if I'm trying to go really hard, there's a really good chance that eventually I might just miss it because I'm reaching or the ball's too close to me, etc. right? So make sure you dial in your toss and you have the right tossing technique. I go more over that in other videos. But make sure you have the right tossing technique so that you're always hitting it in the same spot. And of course you're hitting it below your waist because that's the rule. So you have to hit it below your waist and you want to hit it in the same spot every single time. The way I do that is I turn my hand down and I just drop the ball straight into my paddle. I think that's a little easier than tossing it up, but whatever works for you is best. So play around with it a little bit, but really try to dial in your toss so that you're hitting it in the same exact spot every single time. My fifth trick though is what I call the heat check. So if you come out and play one day and you're hitting your serves hard and they're all going in, by all means, keep serving them hard. You don't wanna miss any, but keep serving them hard because it's working, right? But on the contrary, if you come out one day and you're missing your serves left and right, you might wanna tone things back a little bit. So every day when you come out on the court, every shot's gonna feel a little different, including your serve. So if you're not feeling the best, tone things down. And if you're feeling really good, you can do what's called a heat check and keep going hard until you start missing. Because the harder you serve, obviously the more free points you're gonna get and the easier it'll be to win. So it's kind of an adaptive thing that you have to gauge on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are my five tricks, guys. But if there's one thing that I can emphasize from this whole video, it's stay loose. Staying loose is gonna be what gives you the most power on your serve. So really focus on that if you haven't been already. And if you wanna go deep on topspin, which essentially goes hand in hand with hitting hard, powerful serves, you pretty much need to know how to hit it. Watch this video. I also go over the screwball serve and all the other different types of spins you can hit.